Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about grad school personal statements. And by the way, it's worth noting that these are not your run-of-the-mill undergraduate essays. These are different, y'all. These are academic pieces of writing. But in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some common mistakes that students make, four questions that you should probably answer in your statement of purpose, five ways to actually do the darn thing, plus some examples, and you'll find below this video links to the essays that I'm gonna talk about with awesome analysis and info on how to get one-on-one -on -one support if that's what you're into. Here we go. So the common mistakes I see are, number one, students often think these are gonna be like your undergrad personal statement, and these are not quite like those. They're pretty different, as you'll see in a second. Second, students often don't research programs enough to understand exactly where they're headed. In other words, they don't understand that one program may not be the perfect fit, and it could be that just a little bit more research will help you figure that out. And the third thing is, students really don't understand the depth and the quality of research needed for these. All right, so the four questions that you probably wanna answer in your statement of purpose, three of them you're gonna answer loosely in the first half of your statement of purpose, and the fourth one is loosely gonna be the second half of your statement of purpose. So the first three questions are who, which is to say, who are you as it relates to this particular thing that you wanna study? Second is what, which is broadly speaking, what do you wanna study? And the third one is why, why do you wanna study this thing? And usually the why section is gonna connect the who you are with the what you wanna study. So who is the personal and the what is usually something that's gonna be external or global. And that's broadly speaking gonna be the first half of your statement of purpose. And the second half of the essay is broadly speaking gonna be answering the question of how, which is to say, what are the specific resources you're gonna take advantage of in the program that you're applying to that's gonna help you pursue your why. Now, if all that sounds kind of vague or kind of broad, let's get into some specifics of how to actually do this. All right, tip number one is to maybe find an inciting incident. And I don't mean an exciting incident, it might be exciting. I'm talking about an inciting incident, which is to say the moment that started it all. So here's an example from an actual statement of purpose that was successful. In the introduction to her literary feminist exegesis, Texts of Terror, Phyllis Tribal writes that stories are the, quote, style and substance of our existence, that they, quote, fashion and fill our lives. Tribal's assertion is certainly true of my own life. I consumed stories ravenously as a child, and they've defined my personal and academic life thus far. My life has also been defined by the Christian faith. Ironically, I never engaged with the stories most Christians hold dearest until I enrolled in my first religious studies course, Christian History, as a first year at Grinnell College. Notice the next part's bolded. In this course, I was rattled by the realization that the Bible had, quote, fashioned and filled the world around me, my church, the underpinnings of ideas and systems I came in contact with daily, and perhaps most alarming, the morals and values I had inherited and chosen without my slightest awareness. So this is the moment for the author of this statement of purpose that launches them on the journey, gets them to think about, okay, wait, what does this mean for my, my system of values, for the ways that I'm thinking about the world? Some quick tips for a great inciting incident. First of all, like I said, it probably raises a question, which is to say, the thing that the reader is going to be wondering about while they're reading the rest of your essay. Now, this is a screenwriting trick. You'll often see, you know, screenwriters basically launch a question at the start of the movie. You know, will the two people end up together? Will Frodo destroy the ring? Will they find Nemo? And it's our engagement with that question that keeps us in, okay? So, Related quick tip, if the reader is not that interested in your question, they might kind of get into what we call skimming mode, which is to say they're like, yep, okay, heard it, read it before. Another tip, you notice that this didn't have to come in the first sentence. There was a little bit of setup. That's totally fine. And the next tip I'll give is that you can deepen the reader's interest in your question by doing the next thing. My next bit of advice is to raise the stakes. By raise the stakes, I mean give us some more information, some context to understand why this was such a big deal for you. So take a look at the next sentences in this same statement of purpose. As the course continued on, I learned about the first female apostle and was deeply struck by the ease with which a 14th century translation erased female leadership from the Bible. On the final exam to this course, I was asked, what will you be taking away? My answer was immediate. I will remember Junia. Some tips on raising the stakes. So how do you do this well? Well, a great raising the stakes moment will actually help the reader either care more about the question that you've already raised 
or maybe in some cases lead them to asking new questions in their minds. The other thing you need to know about this is that you don't necessarily have to do this in just like one sentence. You can actually do this in multiple sentences. So you can raise the stakes multiple times. And actually the more that you do that, the more that the reader will be able to connect the what to the who. In other words, who you are and what you wanna study, which is to say it'll deepen their understanding of your why. And you'll see a great example of that in the next sentences in the Statement of Purpose. I spent much of my undergraduate career after this studying literature the author continues, and learning to write my own narratives as an English major, a pursuit which continually drew me back to the themes I studied in courses for a religious studies minor. This range of academic focus allowed me to enter my first biblical studies course. So this is something specific, and you'll notice I've highlighted in bold, that the student did to basically take their learning to the next level. And this is another tip. You could include stuff that you actually did to take your learning further, and maybe include some what I'll call geeky language in here. Example forthcoming. So they took my first biblical studies course with an eye not only for theology, but with the skills to study literary elements such as narrative structure, genre tropes, and source study. Further, the tension that arose when I began to grapple with the Bible as a piece of literature alongside its value as my holy book was, and continues to be, unexplainably thrilling. Two things that I love the author's doing here. One, they're using some of that geeky language, which is to say like 50 cent words that give a sense that, yeah, this is probably gonna be a grad student. And then the second, and it's kind of subtle, is they're sprinkling in a little bit of vulnerability, which is to say, they're letting you know that this was truly a personal journey for them. In this case, for the author, it kind of rocked their sense of personal faith. Next sentence. Consideration of the text's discontinuities and human errors in academic discourse has enhanced and complicated my personal reading of scripture. Likewise, I believe my identity as a woman of faith has enhanced and complicated what I contribute to an academic discourse. I cannot analyze a story like the rape of Tamar in 2 Samuel rhetorically or historically without also considering modern female readership. The challenge of considering these texts and stories holistically is precisely what I want to lean into in my graduate studies. Now, I've underlined that sentence because it's so important. It's the moment where you really get a sense of the why. So we had the who, here's who I was and how I'd been making sense of like faith as it relates to history and religion. And then here's an experience that I had that totally changed things for me or began to change things for me. And ultimately what that led me to is this decision to study this particular field. And usually that for me kind of marks the midpoint of the statement of purpose. Tip number three is to include a turning point, which is to say, was there a moment when things really changed for you? Maybe the moment when you decided to study this particular thing. Now, most people don't have this moment where like they're visited by, I don't know, some angel or something and they're like, you need to study this thing. So really you can do what this author does, which is like relate after a series of moments that like this happened and this happened and this happened. And then I was like, mm, I should probably study this. Practically speaking though, you can kind of think of this as the midpoint of your essay. So if you want, you can just take the total word count, divide it by half and go midpoint. And that's the point where you you want to have something like a turning point where you go from the why you want to study this into like the okay here's how i'm going to actually study that and also practically sort of like logistically speaking if you're worried that that moment isn't going to stand out enough you can actually just like take that sentence wherever it is and like hit enter so that it's on a line by itself and that looks like this so you'll see that the sentence that ends without also considering modern female readership and then there's like space. The challenge of considering these texts and stories holistically is precisely what I want to lean into in my graduate studies. Now, the value of that is making sure, even if the reader's skimming, that they're like, ah, turning point, moment when things change, super clear. Tip number four is to include in the second half of the statement of purpose, specific resources that you're going to take advantage of at the particular program at the university that you're applying to. And some quick tips on this. This is all about research, first of all. So you're probably not gonna be able to like dream this up or like go on a walk and be like, oh yes, I know why I wanna study at this university. Like you gotta get into the website and talk to faculty and do tons of reading to figure out all the particularities of how this program, whatever it is, is essentially connected to your why. Now, if this sounds like my other videos, if you've seen those where I'm talking about a why us essay, that's kind of the genre that we're talking about here. Now, I have a whole separate video on how to research for these programs, but let me give you three quick tips on how to rock this part. So number one, I want you to figure out who you're gonna study with. And yes, obviously that's gonna be researching. The second thing is I want you to include the specific smart sounding field 
that you're going to study with them in. And trust me that you can't get geeky enough on this section. So the more like like jargon that you can include in terms of language to get into like the, this is the thing that I love and that I nerd out on, the better. And the more that you're going to sound like a grad school student who's ready to jump into their program tomorrow. The third thing, and this is something that I think students often forget about, is I want you to include, if you've read their work already, specific impacts that they've had on your thinking. Ways that they've got you to think about things in new ways. Or, if you haven't studied with this person yet, what are some ways that you could anticipate your thinking shifting based on your work with them? And in case you're curious, let me show you what this actually looks like in a statement of purpose. Having the opportunity to attend and take courses at Teachers College with innovators such as Amy Stewart Wells, yes, name the person, truly excites me. Why? Because of my admiration for her research on race and school desegregation. Yes, name the actual field. In April of last year, I had the opportunity to hear Professor Wells speak at a seminar titled Taking Action on School Diversity. Her speech inspired me to explore the policies and practices being implemented in order to attain racial diversity in schools around the country. Finally, I'm going to recommend you bring it home. And what do I mean by bring it home? Here are three quick tips. So you might want to, for example, name the school and the program, especially if you haven't already. Now, if you've just named the school and the program or you've named it already a few times, you don't have to do this, but it could be nice in your conclusion to be like, here's this program and here's why I love you. Tip number two is to name the kinds of problems that you're going to want to be focusing on. Again, especially if you haven't done this already. Example in a second. And the third one is to maybe end with hope. Here's an example of naming the school in the last paragraph. Teachers College would provide an opportunity for me to further develop my quantitative and ethnographic skills in assessing how community institutions support Black and Latinx queer youth. Notice it's very brief and it gets right into the problem. Here's an example of naming the kinds of problems you want to solve. I look forward to the intellectual dialogue and mentorship I would find at the University of Notre Dame where I could grapple with fundamental questions on resistance, peace and war, and the manipulation of history to realize political goals. And finally, an example of ending with hope. The last time I was on Penn's campus was when I was competing against Penn's women's fencing team. Next year, I hope to be on the other side, a member of the Penn educational community, cheering on my new home team. Now, there are lots of different ways that students do this, and you'll see examples linked below this video. Do you have to end with hope? Not necessarily. I, I just kind of like it. It gives a little like lift at the end, which is kind of nice, so it's something to consider. But heads up, this is not the only piece of writing that you'll need to do for grad school. This is the statement of purpose, but you've also got supplemental essays. There are sometimes short answers. There are statements on diversity and the importance of diversity in your life. And then there's like the difference between a resume and a CV, which drives some folks bananas. And there are really strong opinions opinions about. But for more on that, and if you want support on writing, on basically doing your whole grad school application process, we'd love to connect. Feel free to link the, click the link below. Much love, peace, and talk to you soon.